Welcome to this session on building flexible promotions with Sitecore Order Cloud. Across the e-commerce landscape, businesses have unique rules that define the circumstances under which promotions are considered valid. They also have custom logic that defines the amount to discount. Perhaps promotions should only apply to items belonging to a certain category, or a minimum spending threshold must be reached, or first-time shoppers may enjoy a percentage off their first order. We recognize that to achieve optimum flexibility, it doesn't make sense to define a rigid subset of promotion types, which may not align with your marketing strategies. Instead, Order Cloud equips you with the tools necessary to define your own eligibility and discount guidelines. Order Cloud achieves this through our rules-based promotion expressions. Today, we're going to walk you through how to take advantage of our rules engine to develop a library of robust promotions as well as preview some of the exciting enhancements that give you control over how they are applied. Let's dive into the heart of what makes a promotion customizable, the rules engine. Every promotion needs to answer two important questions. One, under what circumstances should this promotion be allowed to apply to an order? And two, what should be the discount amount? Rather than hard coding those answers for you, we offer two properties, the eligible expression and value expression, that can be paired with our rules engine. This offers virtually limitless ways of configuring promotions. We're going to go through a few examples of how to structure these fields, which will equip you with the foundation for building your own promotion rules. To see further examples, we recommend visiting the knowledge base at ordercloud.io and searching for our article on rules-based promotion expressions to reference many more ways of structuring these rules. The eligible expression allows you to customize a rule that evaluates the current state of the order and return true or false. That value indicates whether the promotion can be applied to a shopper's order. In its simplest form, this value can be true, which would indicate that there are no limitations as to when the promotion could be applied but often there's some purchase minimum that needs to be considered, or maybe only a segment of the audience should be able to claim it. Let's say this promotion can only be applied when the cart has a subtotal of $50 or more. We can draft a rule like this, order.subtotal is greater than or equal to 50. If a shopper tries to enter this promo code into their cart and they have not reached this order minimum, the promotion's eligible expression will evaluate to false and the promotion will not be applied to the order. Promotions can also be targeted to specific products. The rules engine allows us to tap into the keyword item for line item level promotions, as well as items, which evaluates the state of any or all line items, as well as order, which references the properties on the order object. When we use items, we can target several items on an order that match a certain property, such as a base product ID. In this example, we want to target any line items with a product ID equaling 123. Any variation of that product would be deemed eligible for this promotion. But maybe we don't want to be that specific and simply allow the promotion to be applied for any product that shares a certain category. We can indicate an eligible expression of item.product.inCategory puzzles, which will apply a line item level promotion to this category of products. Since these expressions can tap into any properties associated with an order, line item, or product, this means your extended properties can be accessed as well. Let's say our buyer users have an XB of first order, which operates as a Boolean, as in this example here. We could create an introductory offer promotion that looks at this eligible expression, order.fromuser.xp.firstorder equals true. Then we could simply patch the user's value to false after the user's first order using this promotion has been submitted. That helps paint a picture of the type of eligible expressions you can create, but what about value expressions? These expressions will evaluate the order or line item details and return a monetary value, which will then reduce either the order or line item subtotal. In the following examples, we'll keep the same eligible expression where the discount just applies to a user's first order. In its simplest form, this value expression can be the exact monetary amount to discount. In this case, 10, 
we would discount the subtotal by $10 or any other currencies your marketplace is using. But we provide many flexible ways to target different values. In the case of a free shipping promotion, you can target order dot shipping cost, and whatever the shipping cost happens to calculate to you on the order will get discounted. We can also take off a percentage of the order by multiplying the subtotal by that percentage, such as this case where we say the order dot subtotal times it by 15%. If our promotion is targeting discounts for line items, we can tap into the count method and try this to spread a specific discount amount across the full quantity of qualified items. So say we want to take $30 off a range of items belonging to a supplier called the Gadget Group. We can say 30 is the amount to discount, and we want to spread that across the count of items this shopper is buying from that group. As always, you can review many more examples in our rules-based promotions article and see how you can create rule expressions that solve your organization's promotion requirements. Let's take a moment to break down an order cloud promotion and discuss the properties that drive functionality. First, promotions can either apply discounts at an order level or a line item level. When applied at an order level, the amount determined for discounting will deduct the order subtotal, whereas a line item level promotion will deduct from a line item subtotal. The code refers to the value keyed in by the shopper to apply a promotion. If a redemption limit is set, the promotion will only apply for the specified number of orders in your marketplace and no longer be redeemable by any user once that limit is reached. Also, a redemption limit per user can limit the number of times a single shopper can apply the promotion. Promotions can only be applied after the specified start date, and if desired, an expiration date will prevent the promotion from being applied past a certain time frame. You should now have a good understanding of how to apply the rules engine against the eligible expression and value expression properties. When can combine is enabled, additional promotions can be applied onto the order, as long as they are also flagged as can combine equals true. If allow all buyers is selected, any buyer in a marketplace would be allowed to use the promotion. Otherwise, explicit promotion assignments will need to be set via the Create or Update a Promotion Assignment endpoint. Finally, promotions can belong either to the marketplace organization or specific suppliers, which the Owner ID field indicates. The remaining fields also drive functionality and represent some of the newest promotion enhancements, which we will cover later in this video. There are a couple of times during the order life cycle when a promotion is evaluated. A promotion is first evaluated when it is applied to the order, which can be done via the add a promotion to an order endpoint. This is the workflow we would expect if we want our users to manually input promotion codes. Additionally, when we call the submit an order endpoint, promotions are re-evaluated to ensure they are still eligible, especially if line item quantities change, redemption limits have maxed out, or expiration dates are reached before checkout is complete. There may be circumstances where you want to control exactly how a line item level promotion is getting applied. Consider a scenario where you have a flat $5 discount at the line item level. When three of an item are added into the cart, that would calculate to $1.67 off per item, which could evaluate to a discount of $5.01. When the rules engine handles a line item level promotion calculation, differently than you would prefer, you can use promotion overrides to enforce a maximum of $5 rather than the calculated $5.01 to take off the subtotal. This is done in the response to the order calculate step of checkout, and you can reference the data model of the expected response in our knowledge base article on the order checkout integration event. The features we've discussed so far have been in place for some time but new enhancements have been introduced in 2023 that take promotions to the next level. First, we have recently introduced the ability to mark promotions as auto-apply. When this is true, this can allow the promotion to be applied to an order without the need for a buyer user to input a promo code. Taking advantage of this feature will help in maintaining a library of promotions that you wouldn't normally expect users to input. However, you will still have control over when this library of promotion codes is used 
as the new Apply Promotions endpoint still needs to be called during checkout to apply these promotions. This will attempt to apply promotions with the Auto Apply flag set to True to the order. Optionally, you can target the new Priority property on Promotions, which takes in an integer and defines the order in which the eligible promotions would automatically apply. Any promotions without a value specified will apply last, and you would be responsible for maintaining the sequencing as new promotions are added. This will help to ensure that certain discounts get applied before others, which can affect the total discount amount. Additionally, we've added a Boolean active property to be able to more easily deactivate promotions. Previously, a user would be required to manage the start date and expiration date properties to turn promotions on or off. While this is still a valid approach, the active property will allow someone to more easily shut down a promotion at any time. This allows you to keep the promotion for historical reference, and values like redemption count can still be referenced, so marketers can evaluate what campaigns were successful and possibly reactivate a promotion again in the future. Finally, a new endpoint has been introduced allowing users to query promotions that are eligible on an order. Previously, it was necessary to attempt to apply a promotion to evaluate its eligibility. By calling this endpoint, a user will see what unapplied promotions can be added to the order based on its current state. To learn more about these new features, please check out our knowledge base at ordercloud.io and search for promotion enhancements. This concludes our session on building flexible promotions with Sitecore Order Cloud.